Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Keep the Line Moving, the podcast designed to talk about leadership, life, and inspiration. I am your host, Chris Gargano, and we have a special guest for you this week. His name is Stedman Graham. He's an author, a speaker, an educator, and you know him from his relationship with Oprah Winfrey. But he's so much more than that. He's written a dozen books. He's one of six children. And in our conversation, he'll talk about the sport of basketball and how much that means to him. But his life's mission is identity, self-awareness. Who are we? How do we find our passion? How do we become continuous and lifelong learners? Goal setting, creating a method for growth. It's a fascinating conversation. I'm so glad you're with us. And it begins now with Stedman Grant. I love what I do. And, uh, and so I try to kind of organize everything around the core of who I am. Uh, and that really helps out a lot. I try to segment my life around things that make me happy. And, uh, and I have a process for following that. Uh, you know, so uh, it's a good day. I, I try to make it a good day. I love that. And, you know, doing things that we're passionate about that are an extension of who we are is a beautiful thing. So tell us, tell our listeners and viewers, who are you and what are you all about? Well, uh, I'm really about helping other people empower themselves. I I think if that uh, that was uh, if you had to create a mission statement around something that was relevant to your development, that's who I am. And, uh, uh, I mean, I enjoy that. I love that. And I appreciate the opportunity and I'm blessed to be able to do that because it's kind of the work that I do. I'm a social work major, uh, in uh, undergrad in social work and, and a master's in education, uh, from Ball State. And, uh, and so I, I really am doing the work that I uh, love to do and I went to school for it. And so it, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to be involved in, uh, this human development process of working with people to make them better and create opportunities for them as much as I possibly can. So did you know that way back in school when you were getting your master's and your undergrad, did you know that you had, you know, listen, I want to dedicate my life simply to helping people? I really didn't know it. Uh, it really kind of came natural for me because my mom, uh, she really was so involved in the community. Uh, she's involved in nursing. And uh, my father, of course, was a hard worker. And I worked with him, uh, which is where I got my work ethic from. Uh, and so really, it's, uh, it's kind of a learn, learn behavior. I grew up with uh, two special need brothers in my family. Uh, so I had to give a lot and uh, I had to spend time with them to to make sure that they were OK. Uh, and so I dealt with a lot of issues, a lot of trauma issues, traumatic issues, uh, uh, a lot of pain points that I had to deal with. And so uh, through all of that process, it helped me become a better person. That's a wonderful way of putting it. And so those foundational elements to your upbringing what what were some of the challenges? Were you were you um, instrumental in the upbringing of your two brothers, and how involved were you in in making their life just a little bit better on a daily basis? Well, I had to take care of them, you know, and uh, be responsible for them, and watch uh, and be with them everywhere they went for the most part, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, of course, I had my own life. I had sports as a way to help me kind of overcome some of the obstacles of you know, having low self-esteem and a lack of confidence in myself. I didn't really feel good about who I was as a person because I was always teased and bullied uh, coming up and called names. You can imagine uh, what that was like in school. Um, And so uh, through all of that, um, you really kind of are looking for yourself. You know, you're looking to try to figure out who you are as a person and so that was my journey of trying to figure out who I was as a person. And um, of course, that's, a, that's, a, that's another story. Um, and so the ability to be able to understand how to um, survive in that situation and not self-destruct, which you can easily do if you focus on the negative as opposed to the positive. I had a race-based consciousness, which I was focused on race, I lived in an all black town surrounded by White County where they said nothing ever good comes out of uh, Whitesboro, which is where I came from, Whitesboro, New Jersey. We had a lot of great uh, things that came out of Whitesboro, but we were again being programmed. So if you buy into those programs of family circumstances and race and, and being labeled, you know, you, it takes you a long time to learn 
uh, it's not how the world defines you, it's how you define yourself. Wow. So as you did define yourself and persevere during those challenging times, what type of young man were you becoming? And did you have the self-realization that I am persevering, I'm getting through this, I'm going to come out on the other side, I'm going to have an education, and I'm going to be something someday? Well, that's your hope. That's your hope. And I had a lot of great role models around me. Uh, the guy that founded, the gentleman that founded the town I lived in, who was re a relative of ours, was a former congressman through uh, in re Reconstruction a long time ago. Um, and uh, he founded the town I lived in. And so uh, I had a strong family background, a family tree that extended way beyond probably normal family numbers. Uh, we have like 1400 on our database, you know, we have our own family foundation, you know, there was a lot of uh, accomplishments, you know, that our family made. And so I had that kind of to look up to uh, and give me a solid base. And then I had basketball. So sports was, a, a and you know about that uh, because mm -hmm. you've been involved in that for a long time, Christopher. Uh, sports is kind of the, the, the way out for me. It gave me enough confidence to believe in myself. I was a pretty good basketball player, if you let me tell it. And, uh, you know, eventually I went to college playing ball and then played in the, in the European League, um, you know, later on in life. But basketball was kind of my identity uh, early on, and it, and it gave me a, a sense of uh, accomplishment and uh, some self-esteem. I love that. I love both those premises. And the, I love the first one. It takes a village concept, right? To have all that support from your family and then sports, obviously. So look, can we drill down and it takes a village and then I'll get to the hoops because I love talking about that, obviously, as you said. But having, you know, when people are raised in, in a community like that and they have so much support, accountability is so important. You're accountable to yourself. And that's obviously what we'll get to what you do today. But you're also accountable, I should say, to the people that love you and care for you. So what was that dynamic like? I really, really like to know that. Well, that requires training. And I had really good training coming up. I had uh, I went to a segregated school uh, growing up. Um, and so I had that early on in, in the elementary years. I had that as a foundational base because I didn't have to worry about uh, race for the most part, you know. Mm -hmm. I have role models that look like me uh, for the most part. Uh, I have people that were cared about me. Uh, we played sports a lot. You know, I had friends, a lot of friends. Um, and we, and everybody was well accomplished. You know, our teachers always said, you got to be twice as good. Uh, and they always prepared us for um, uh, a vision bigger than ourselves and bigger than our circumstances. So, you know, most of the young people that I grew up with, and I, I would say mostly all of them were smart because the teachers really poured a lot into them. And, and we had the community support. Church was a big part of my life, Sunday school, um, and also usher board and choir and all the things that come with that. Boy Scouts, 4-H, uh, you know, we had a lot of, a lot of programs like that. And we created our own, uh, which really uh, made it very personable and very community-based. So the, the community is a huge thing in determining your success because it provides a, a, foundational, uh, a foundational support and guidance in the name of people who actually spend time with you and show you that you, know, you have some self-worth. So then you find sports. How did you find it? How did you first know? I know you're a tall gentleman, but how did you know that, hey, basketball could be something that really helps my self-esteem and helps me, you know, create friends and just that camaraderie that comes from playing sports? Well, we created our own programming, you know, for the most part. We didn't have a lot of organized. We didn't even have a basketball hoop in town, uh, you know, so it's, it, I, I used to have to, you know, uh, hitchhike three miles to play basketball. Wow. You know, because we didn't have a court available locally. And uh, and so there was a drive there that was created that all of us had for the most part because we didn't have a lot. So we had to create our own, develop our own and organize our own. And so we became very competitive and uh, we ran a lot. We raced a lot. You know, so we had a lot of uh, uh, young people who were fast because we're always running and challenging each other. 
we had football, you know, we just needed the football. We could play football. We played tackle football, uh, baseball. We organized baseball in our community. And uh, for the most part, sports was kind of the competitive thing that you did to prove yourself. Uh, and you and you worked on that every day. Every day we were playing sports. So eventually what happens is that we, we produce so many strong athletes who had the determination and the perseverance because they didn't have the easy way out. They had to create it from, the, from, from their own personal development. And they had to, uh, you know, we put man baskets on, on a, a backboard, you know, I mean, a real basket mm -hmm. cut out the bottom you know, and then create our own basketball court, you know, and we played every day because that's what we did. And so through that, you learn that there's a process for success and you uh, learn how to, you know, have that determination and drive to be the best. And boy, you cannot, you, if you don't have that, you don't have a whole lot. And I can hear that in your voice, that drive that you had and that determination. And that helped you play in Europe, right? I can assume that that was a fulfilling experience. Can you take us through that? Well, it, well you know, I was in the Army, uh, which was great. Uh, and that took me to Europe. And then uh, a team saw me play and they picked me up. And I, I was playing basketball in the service and traveling around Europe playing, playing ball. And so a fascinating experience for me uh, to be able to have that. I traveled all over Europe. Uh, I saw a lot, you know, that was different from America. Um, and so basketball got me through college. It got me a scholarship. So my parents couldn't afford to pay for it. Uh, and, it and it kept me going um, despite of, you know, some difficulties. And, you know, I was an okay student. I, I didn't understand really the importance of education and, and knowledge until later on in life. Uh, but I did have at least a foundation to build upon. Your master's degree was in education at Ball State. So you're saying at that time you didn't really appreciate the the um, the nuances and the the advantages that you get from education. Did you have to have that? Is the reflection then, or was it a little bit later in life? I I didn't understand the process of how information worked. I got you. I mean, what I teach now is freedom. I teach people how to organize information around who they are, transfer it to their mind, so they become a thinking human being, and then transferring that to the American Free Enterprise System to create and design their own future, you know, uh, but I didn't understand the relevancy of, of, of knowledge and how you could apply it to empower yourself, um, you know, every day, the more that you read, the more that you know, the more that you learn, I didn't know how to learn. So I wasn't a learner. And uh, I just was told to go to school and I was in a surviving mode. You just go to school, you got try to get a degree, you graduate, you get out, and you still have no sense of self uh, or empowerment. You don't know who you are. You're not able to self-actualize your potential as a human being. And you don't have the sense of equality. So you feel like you're less than and marginalized because of all of the old messages that you get uh, from your historical background and living in that household for 18, 19 years you know, being able to repeat what you were told by your parents, which may not be sufficient enough, especially in the 21st century. Was there an aha moment for you? So you get out of Ball State, you, you start to get into your career and you start to, you know, understand, listen, I need to learn more. I need to educate myself. All the things you just said, was there a singular moment or was it an evolution? Well, it's always an evolution. It's always small steps. There are no big deals. There's no big aha. It's a series of small steps that happen over a period of time. It's called a journey. Yes. You know, it's not a destination. And so your ability to be able to figure this stuff out, you know, you got to be able to put the pieces together and you don't know how to do that because we're not taught to do that. We're just taught to kind of in school, teach that school teaches us how to memorize and take tests, repeat the information back. You get labeled with a grade and two, two weeks later, you forget the information. And most of the people in the world are followers. We're all followers doing the same thing over and over every single day. You're not going anywhere. You're just looking for a job and you're trying to do the best you can every single day, but you're not developing because we're focusing so much on the external world as a way to define our existence. And we're defined by race and 
house and car and money and title and family and in my case later on in life relationship and so you're 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 defined by the external world as a way to determine your value and you don't understand how to build or, or to create value within yourself. This is not an external job. If you're looking for what I teach, it's an internal process of being able to kind of organize your life, find out who you are, find out what your talents and skills are, self-actualize that, uh, and then build on that every day so you become good at what you do. And that's the value that you, you give to society. And I know you've written 12 books and it's and you go into companies, you go into universities, guest lecture, teaching courses and such. What is the first thing you say to people? Because I can really identify with what you're saying and the way you articulate it. We were on this journey with you. What is the first thing you say? It's almost like an awakening, right? If somebody's going on and they want to buy the Corvette, they want to live in the big house and have all the material gains um, from making a great living. That's wonderful. But what you're saying is that true value of who you are is so much more powerful and can lead to success in that side, but also can lead to personal fulfillment. So how do you get people on board to understand your quality message? You know, that is, that's a great question, Christopher. It really is, you know, I mean, when I go in, I'm trying to raise people's consciousness about, man, what are you actually doing? What, what you know, what is your process for success? Do you know who you are? Do you know what you're capable of, of, of doing, what you're capable of producing? You know, and I also tell everybody's got 24 hours. So the question is, that what, that's what makes us all equal. Everybody has 24 hours. So the question is, is how organized you, are you? Order is the highest level of development. Can you organize your life around yourself? And then I have a nine-step success process that I teach and take people through. But getting people to wake up, and realize that you really have the potential for, uh, to do anything that you want to do. And that the process of success, which is what I learned, is the same for everybody. The difference is some people know it and some people don't. So when you know the process of success, you don't have to worry about the labels. You don't have to worry about where you came from. You don't have to worry about your background. You don't have to worry about you know, what you didn't have or looking at the glass half empty as opposed to have full, it's about changing your mindset. And we live in the greatest country in the world, which is America, and being able to organize America's resources and opportunities, which is why so many people are trying to get to this country because we have the opportunities here. We have the resources. So we can learn to how to apply those resources and opportunities to our development so that we can become better today than, when, than we were yesterday, man, you, you, you become engaged in the world that you live in for the first time in your life. Do you think people know they're not engaged? Do you think they, think they are? I Great got question. They think everybody thinks they know who, who they are. Uh, I was talking to a young man the other day. And I said, you know what? Uh, and I was speaking at a group and, and, uh, and I said to him, um, you know, I, 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 he asked me what I did. I said, I, I, I teach identity development. I went through the whole spiel of how it works. And I said, would you buy this program or course? And, you know, just to, just to test them out. And he said to me, well, I know who I am. Well, that's fine, but uh, you have so much potential as a, as a human being, so much potential as a person. I don't think, I think the way you've been programmed, you think you know who you are. But I would tell you this, 99% of the people in the world, which represents about 8 billion people, are pretty much lost. They're doing the same thing over and over. They wake up in the morning, they wash their face, they brush their teeth, they get something to eat, they get the kids off to school, work all day, come home in the afternoon, they spend time with the family, they watch TV, they go to bed, maybe they dream that's Monday. And they do the, repeat that same cycle over and over again. If you did the same thing you did yesterday as you would do today, as you would do tomorrow, what have you done? The answer is nothing. And that's what most people are doing. Because they're not thinking, they're not developing, they're not building or creating, and they certainly don't know how to take information and make it relevant to who they are as a person. You know what? I love what you're saying. And here's, here's look at this. I have identity leadership is self-leadership based on the philosophy that you cannot lead others until you lead yourself. That's what you've written. That is what I'm looking at right here on your website. Here's what I want to say. Is the reason that they repeat everyday activities, exactly what you just said, go to work, come home, watch TV, eat dinner, all that. Is it because they know it's work 
or what it, and or is it the the latter thing that you said which was they think they're self aware they think they know themselves what 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 is the 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 crutch there that they get into they're doing the best they can with what they know if you know better as my angelo says you do better you don't know any better because that's the program and the program is designed to control you and keep you in a box and it marginalizes you by teaching you uh, about certain boxes. You have all these boxes. You got family boxes. You got relationship boxes. You got um, race boxes. You got gender boxes. Women are told you can't make it because it's a man's world wrong. You can't make it because you don't know who you are. And so, you know, it, it, it's a, it's kind of a. Uh, you know, I got your game. I got you because I, I'm going to give you and teach you what I want you to know. You're going to follow it because you don't even have a system for your own self-empowerment. You're not even working on yourself. You're just going through the motions every single day. And, the, the, you know, you, you, you have no process for uh, uh, empowering your own development. You can't reach your own potential because you don't even you can't even start because you don't even know who you are. You don't even know what to start on. You have no foundation for building, thinking, developing, or creating. So when you look at folks in a ballroom, a classroom, or whatever the setting is, a small boardroom, and you've got 10 people up to 1,000, and you start to see people getting it, what are then the questions that they ask you on how to get it and to get in touch with themselves? Well, that's an aha moment, number one. I don't care who you are. So I'm, I'm speaking to corporate folks. I'm speaking to folks with a lot of money. I'm speaking to uh, executives. I'm speaking to young people. I'm speaking to people at all, at all levels. And when you change the learning system around, which is when you start to take information and make it relevant to who you are, your talents, your abilities, your skills, and the most important word is what you love, okay? The key here piece is love as a way to build your identity, now you start to create, design, uh, self-actualize your potential as a human being. But if you don't find your potential, if you don't find out what makes you happy and what, what you love, you can't sustain it over a long period of time. So you need something to build from. Where's the information that I can organize that will allow me to focus on a part of who I am so that I can empower myself just in that segment, whether it be health or family or hobbies or basketball, you know, you find out what, what you love and care about. Let's use basketball as a, as a way to, you know, because we both understand that as a way to develop a process for continuous improvement. I want the information that relates to basketball so I can be a great basketball player, not a good basketball player, a great basketball player. So opportunities will be presented to me based on that skill set. And so we have a lot of skill sets. We don't know it because we don't do self-discovery work. We're looking for work, not self-discovery work. So when you start to self-discover, now you say, oh, this is who I am. This is my identity. This is who I can become. And the beautiful thing about where we are is we have all of the resources and now technology as a way to do what? Gather information and make that information relevant to our development so we can develop a process of continuous improvement every day where we're better today than we were yesterday, which we built more value, the value that you give yourself is the value the world gives you. The world sees you as you see yourself. How do you do it every day? How do you go through your day? That's what I do. I organize my day. Order is the highest level of development. I understand how to take information and apply it to what I'm working on. Okay, I set goals. I have a vision for myself. I have a plan for myself. I can follow that. Uh, I try to, uh, I get more determination and perseverance because I am clear and aligned with my vision. I understand how to break that down into small bites, right? Small pieces. And I work on that every day, which will take me toward my, you know, what I see for myself, you know? So there is a process for success. It doesn't happen just because you get up 
and you want to go to work. It happens because you have an alignment. It happens because you have a big, bigger, bigger dream than um, you know uh, than than you had yesterday. It happens because you have a plan. It happens because you write it down. You got fifty thousand thoughts going through your mind every single day. You can't possibly remember everything. So you got to organize yourself. This is an organizational process. Right now, you're organizing everybody else, but you. So how do we get you to organize you, right? So that the more you have, the more you can give to your society. Introspection. I love it. And being, you know, dialed in about what your goals and dreams are and then taking actionable plans. And you do speak with clarity. You mentioned clarity right there. And you do speak with tremendous amount of clarity. Who does this well? Who are some leaders that you look at, that you admire, that you've said, Either you know them or you've come in contact with them or you've read about them. Doesn't matter. Who do you admire that has clarity, knows themselves and has achieved goals and are still achieving and wanting to do more with their lives? I think most of you are very successful people understand it from an organizational standpoint. I don't know. They are thought leaders, so I don't know if they understand it from a thought leader perspective on how much they can leverage and what they can create for others to serve other people? And how do, how do you use yourself as a vessel to be able to do that? Uh, you know, the, the more you have, the more you can give. You, you, you can't give what you don't have. So when you learn that it's a process of working on yourself first, the key here is working on yourself and creating the opportunities for other people once you are able to build value in your own existence. Now you can share it. I mean, I, of course I'm around Oprah, uh, you know, who is one of the most extraordinary women that I know of, a people, a person in the world, actually. And so she understands it very well, and she understands how to organize information. Uh, and she is a reader, you know, which is the key to this whole thing is you have to be a reader, but you have to be able to apply reading and that information to who you are as a person so that you can produce. So you're actually a producer of your own uh, worth and value, and then a producer to help other people find out, you know, where they should go, or, you know, I call it leadership, right? Which is, I call it the identity leadership, but really it's a leadership issue. Who's gonna lead? Who's gonna take charge? Who's gonna make it happen? Who's gonna be the coach? You know, who's going to uh, uh, make it happen? Uh, because you don't have any competition because most people are doing the same thing over and over every single day. They're not going anywhere. So it's the leaders, man, who do the extra effort. It's the leaders who put the time and, and effort into it. It's the leaders who have the determination and perseverance. It's the leaders that never quit. Those are the people that, you know, are, 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 are of a rare breed. And so, man, leadership is just everything. And if you can do self-leadership as a way to build yourself, then, of course, that rolls into uh, helping other people and leading other organizations. You just mentioned Oprah, and obviously she is a leader of all leaders. And what she has done is absolutely amazing. And something else you said that is relevant to this as well is that you can read and you can study and you can do all the the elements that you're talking about to, to be a self leader and to self actualize. But if you don't put it into use and you don't put it to service others and, and something you also said, it takes courage to be a leader. So you, I love what you you're saying there. You can, cause you're tech, you're taking everybody through each and every step, which is realize that you need to do the work. Here's how to do the work but then you have to put it into action as a leader. It, have I summarized that pretty accurately for you? Yeah, that's pretty good. You understand the process. I mean, you know, re re the reason why you, got, you, you get this is because you've gone through the process yourself, right? You have yes. a strong educational foundation. You're very aware of what's going on around you. You're a producer because you're producing your own podcast. You help other people. You've done that for years. So, you know, so it's a lot easier for you to get and understand. The big key here, uh, and it, it's the difference between failure and success is, is, is love. So learning to love yourself 
learning to change the energy around, learning to uh, change your attitude around, learning to manage yourself and your emotions, learning to overcome the obstacles that you've had to face that uh, can take you out or did take you out, learning to forgive yourself, learning to uh, be the best person you could possibly be. Love encompasses all of that. Having the energy of love, the law of attraction says whatever you put out, you give back. So if you put out negativity, that's exactly what you're going to get back. If you put out being positive, that's exactly what you're going to get back. And you only have two choices. So uh, that first step, the identity is based on what you love and being able to organize everything you love in your life and micromanage that, okay, in the world that we live in. And now, again, I go back to technology because it's such a revolutionary tool as a way to be able to do research and download content that's relevant to empowering what you love so that you can be the best person that you can possibly be and overcome the obstacles and negativity in your life so that design doesn't become a, a roadmap for your existence. Stedman, I can talk to you for hours, but I'm not going to do that because I respect you and your time. However, if I have one more for you, if you don't mind, what advice would you give to somebody? Because you've imparted so much wisdom in this time that we've had together, but there's somebody out there probably thinking, how can I get started? All of the things that Stedman's saying, you know, I could get his books um, and you could talk about any one, a number of one of your books, you know, the one that's most recent, of course, please feel free to do so. But what can they do tomorrow, tonight, this afternoon to take action into the elements and advice that you're giving us today? Well, the easiest thing to do is uh, make a choice every day that you're going to focus on love as opposed to being negative. Use love as the center of your existence. Um, you know, find out what you love to do and work on it. And, you know, that would be, I mean, I, I would say that's really connected to working on yourself. Work on yourself with loving thoughts. Work on yourself with finding out your passion and your purpose and your meaning in life. Uh, focus on your attitude in terms of taking the high road as opposed to uh, the low road. Uh, try to transform your own energy level or your own energy by eliminating as much negativity as you can and look for the best in who you are. All of us are capable of doing that because that's a choice we make every day. So we can practice that. Just practice that. And that will change your life. That's fantastic. You know, and I would phrase that to people um, that I worked with over the years by saying, just be kind to yourself. You know, don't beat yourself up. Be kind to yourself. And you use the term love. And I, you could say, just love yourself. And I, I, and I use the word love a lot. And I love this. This has been great. Thank you so much, Stedman. Thank you. Well, thank you for what you do. And uh, man, it's a pleasure. Your questions were unbelievable, and it's a great it's a great opportunity to get the chance to know you, and I appreciate that. And we thank Stedman very much for being on the show. And my number one takeaway this week is this. This was a great conversation on finding your passion. What do you truly love, and how do you do the work to get there to reach your full potential? What a fascinating conversation it was, doing the work of self-discovery. And then you will have this, and it will take you through a long period of time. It's a wonderful way of looking at life. And I appreciate Stedman for shedding all that light and all that knowledge for us in this conversation. What makes you happy? Go looking for it. Enjoy the journey. For podcast producer Paul Salazar, I am Chris Gargano. We thank you so much for being part of the show each and every week on Keep the Line Moving. If you'll subscribe, follow, like us. We appreciate it. Take care, everybody. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. We thank you for listening to Keep the Line Moving. We would love it if you subscribed or left a review. For more podcast episodes, check out our YouTube page. If you'd like to work with the Gargano Leadership Group, check out our website. This has been a GLG production, copyright 2023. For our podcast producer, Paul Salazar, and our marketing coordinator, Savin Narwhal. Have a great week, everyone.